hey guys welcome back to my channel and today i'm going to be teaching you guys how to install lock extensions um i start by parting my client's hair in four sections I always start parting down the middle and then after i get my middle down pat i part it uh right behind both ears then i section those parts off into four sections and then once i'm comfortable with those sections i'll uh, go ahead and start the installation process. So as you guys can see right now, I'm parting like a little bit right behind the ear. I got my four sections ready and then I go in with my first guideline and my client today are, uh, they're going with, um, square parts or grid parts however you want to call it and i part one side first and then i make the connection in the middle to make sure everything looks smooth uh going from ear to ear so now i'm taking my triple prong crochet needle and i'm making my first uh instant lock because she has um a nice amount of hair to start off with, uh, I will be going in to do instant locks and then connecting it, connecting the extension to make it a seamless blend. So I'm gonna speed this part up here. And yeah, so I just do my triple prong uh, 0.5 millimeter um, crochet needle. My hooks are facing away from me and I never take my eye off the needle so that I can make sure that I don't prick myself or I don't prick the client. So that's really how I, um, how my method is. I usually just install the instant locks first, um, make sure that I test it with the extension and my client's instant locks are going to kind of like fluff out because she still has to go through the locking process and uh, I want to make sure that it's still going to be a seamless blend throughout her lock journey. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm just going in with the instant locks right now. And after I install the instant locks, I'll see and I'll gauge if anything needs to be changed before just going in and in attaching the extension. And then I have to cut the extension out if I don't like the blend. I'll cut the extension out, then have to comb out the hair when I can just go ahead and install the instant locks first and then see if I like everything. Um, I'll put up my extension close to the instant lock. I don't think I put it in here for you guys to see. Uh, this is like an eight to 10 hour process. And then uh, I have to cut it down to like 20 minutes. So this is how I gauge everything. I kind of like put it close to the instant lock and then I fluff out the bottom of the instant lock. I leave like an inch and then like the top of the extension, it's like an inch of her. I fluff them out to like two pieces and then I kind of like intertwine them and then I wrap them around each other. I take my double prong 0.5 millimeter uh, crochet needle facing away from me so I don't have no uh, oops moments and I just go in and I lock that bad boy in. So um, this is my method. It's no, I won't say it's like a right or a wrong way of doing this, but this is what's helped me this far. Um, so yeah, I just do a lot of my detail work with my double prong uh, uh, crochet needle. And that's what I feel like helped me get done faster as well as making sure everything is nice and tight without me slowing down the process of detail work with one the uh, single prong crochet needle. I hope that makes sense. But I'm just going in and double checking my work. Usually after I um usually after I install the first extension, I usually give my client the mirror so they can see how the process is going and if they like the size or if they, you know, like the parts and everything. And I'll make adjustments if needed when it comes to my client's liking. Um, also, most of my clients are coming in kind of like 
a little nervous because most of my clients who come in and do this are my girlies that came in from like doing box braids all the time or wigs and sew-ins and things like that. So I try to like make sure that they know that this is a collaboration and I'm not just telling them and I'm not just doing what I want to do. I just want to kind of like walk them through the process. So most of the time I'm just like telling them how I do my thing. And I've already pretty much told them at the consultation before they actually um, get the service done. And they've pretty much watched me on YouTube and seen how my work go. But just in case, I just still kind of like rewalk them through it. And, you know, I'll do like a row or two and let them see it. And that's how my process go. And I make sure uh, me being a barber, I already got a barber chair. So um, I have like a reclining chair. That way, like I said, this is an eight to uh, 10 hour process. I want to make sure that my clients because this is such a long service that they are comfortable and also I'm comfortable as well because this can like break my back you know what I'm saying be standing up all day and uh on this one person you know what I mean so at this moment while she's laying back I uh pretty much am doing the same thing and making sure that she's comfortable and then I'll um have a seat because I am vertically challenged we don't say short over here that is blasphemy so like me being a little closer to the ground i just you know have a seat whilst i'm doing my installation process at the top and then um it's like i said it's the same thing all around um me and my client pretty much talk the whole time like some of my clients if they want to just relax and this be a relaxing time and i kind of guide them through the first hour i let them know what's going on and then uh, I let them see what's going on and I kind of do my thing. I'm watching the show, they watching the show. And then like when it's time to lay them back, some of them will fall asleep. And then some of them, we just be talkiana. You know what I mean? We'll talk through the whole process. And um, yeah, this is pretty much my process. I hope I explained everything well. Um, uh, like another thing that I do want to talk about is when it comes to the edges. So some people may have like thinner edges and I might have to make thicker parts in the front because if I don't, clearly the conversation was really good because my hand was all up in the camera, but I might have to make thicker parts for my clients who have uh, thinner edges because we need to compensate for the extension not being too um, heavy and weighing down those parts and, const and possibly thinning in the future and you or the hair not is not being enough hair for the extension to hold on to so it'll be sliding out like as if i put a 4c lock extension on 1a hair or 2a hair you know what i mean it won't have enough grip so i try to like uh let them know and see how comfortable they are with it during the consultation first not like while they're in my chair and then we explore other options but for this particular person they had like the perfect hairline they had the perfect everything so i didn't really have to do too much of that um i was a little worried because it's a little hard to gauge that but um i feel like well actually i just did this client's hair today um they flew out from chicago to come get their hair done and uh their lock extensions are doing literally amazing and they've had it in since april and it is now september 29th and y'all will be seeing this on the first so um yeah like i'll definitely show some updated pictures on my instagram and my tiktok uh but the extensions are amazing they haven't thinned out at all uh and i know like from looking at her journey that the locks are pretty you you won't even be able to tell by the time her her fully fully locks without like the help of instant locks and everything once she get through that first year her hair is going to be like exactly like the locks so yeah i hope you guys understand what i'm saying i know i kind of been like talking a little bit but the process i'm just gonna break it down as basic as possible the process is i instant lock the loose hair after i instant lock the loose hair with my triple prong 0.5 milliliter, millimeter uh, crochet needle with the hooks 
facing away from me, I go in, fluff out the in the top of the extension. I interlock those two by splitting the hairs in two, and then um, I kind of put them together like a puzzle piece. After that, I go in with my double prong, 0.5 millimeter crochet needle, hooks facing away from me, and then I just do my detail work and connect the instant lock to the extension for that seamless plan that you guys will see at the end. Just in case you guys are wondering, this is not a uncomfortable process for my client. Um, with them laying, laying down, this is a pretty comfortable process for them. Um, it is not painful. Um, as you can see right now, like I usually, um, whatever section I'm working on, I detangle the piece that I'm working on and I part as I go. Like. That's another thing, like I don't part and then uh, put product on the hair and then instant lock and then uh, it attach the extension. I don't really like that method for myself. Um, my technique is more so like install everything, get the hair flowing after the wash and the shampoo and everything. Um, I just feel like the hair flow better. It don't just be looking like stiff. It don't be looking stiffy on them. Like, I, I just hate to see that. Um, I know I've done that in the past. So I just know that this makes my, from my experience, this makes my client's lock extensions look more natural, if y'all get what I mean. Um, but yeah, like I said, my client was not uncomfortable. Uh, the only times that I went and took a break was when I used the restroom. Um, I don't really, not like I don't really eat throughout the day, but I usually just like, I'll take a bathroom break and if I need to sit down and have a little snack, I will. I usually have snacks for my clients for this process because it's such a long process. I just try my best to like, make sure that they are comfortable. Um, and if they want to door dash something, they could, but I do have snacks in my area so that they really don't have to do too much um, moving around so now we get into this wash um i didn't have a lot of footage for the wash because i had so much footage to like cut down like to get it to where it's only 22 minutes but as you guys know i'm going in with my design essentials products i go in with my old protein and henna this particular client has um some issues with dry scalp so i do go in with a neutralizing shampoo as well so then i follow up with the design essentials line the old protein and henna the honey cream and then i follow up with my rosemary and mint shampoo uh, i mean conditioner and then after that like um my client scalp has they went so good so like with the extensions i know some people might have like a reaction um the color is 1b so this is unprocessed hair. Um, I've never had anybody have a reaction to this hair. So um, this is uh, also I didn't hear make these locks. I purchased them from somebody. Um, and yeah, that's really it. Sometimes my clients will come in and they'll have their locks. Sometimes I'll just include it in the service. It's really up to my client and the look that they're going for. So. That's what I would do um, for that client. I'll just do, I'll act accordingly. You know what I mean? I'll just give them what they ask for. So yeah, guys, this is the wash. And make sure 
that, like I said, I moisturize. I put the moisture back in the hair with the moisturizer shampoo. And I go in with my rosemary and mint conditioner. All right, y'all, everybody loves two strands. Y'all already know my client was definitely with the two strands, especially from her being a, a braid girly. Um, her wearing braids all the time and, um, you know, doing the extension thing. It was just only right and she's very active. So she felt like this would be best for her. Um, I'll link a, a more in-depth tutorial of my two strand. Um, method in the card somewhere like here to the right side now or now or maybe now <laughs> either way it'll pop up um so right now i'm just redefining the parts i'm not breaking any hair i'm just really like taking my time i'm just pulling it out of the actual lock so like since her hair isn't actually locked lock i don't know if that makes us making any sense so it's not breaking at all when I pull it out. It's just more so like sliding it out of the lock that I created. And you know, I just go in with the comb. I locksmith it. After I locksmith it, I palm roll. And this is a no clip retwist for me. I don't remember how many locks she actually has, but I could tell y'all it's an even number. I know it's over a hundred because she got some real nice for her, um, but it's definitely over a hundred. I know it's like over 110 too. Uh, it might be like 120 something, but it's definitely, I remember, I remember being in there and putting, we pretty much used all of the lots and any of the lots that I don't use, I usually just give them back to my client. Um, just in case they need to repair down the line or whatever may pop up or you know they might want to do something else with it add it to a style or whatever um but i usually just give it back to them and um uh, y'all already know i done did so many two strands on this page it's ridiculous but hey you do it once you do it all the time whatever that's everybody's favorite style even my own two strand and plaid queen that's my favorite thing to do um but yeah um that's really it when it comes to the extension thing like i know i know that i have another extension video coming up and it's i know that for certain people you know the nape of the neck is a little thinner so i i usually adjust by making the last row of if they get boxes or whatever parts they decide to get i make sure that those uh, parts are a little bit bigger to compensate for the hair being finer and it not being as much density to grip on to the extension extension wise y'all know what I mean so I kind of skipped to the front to, to give you guys um, a different angle I gave my client a universal part so what that means is she could do it she could part of her down the middle she could part of her on the left side or the right side and you know not worried about a lock being in the middle of her forehead now ain't nothing wrong with a lock being in the middle of the forehead but if that's not what the client wants don't do it uh, so i didn't do it and so yeah it's easy for them to kind of like play around with what side they like they her uh to lay is they can fall it could fall in the middle it's just easier for them to manipulate you know what i mean um when it comes to like you know uh, in the middle of 
how can I say it? It's easier for them to manipulate and play around with in between services. There we go. Uh, my client did ask for baby hers. That's what she liked. Everybody don't like that, but it looked good on her and I made it happen. Um, this client was definitely a pleasure uh, for being around like eight to 10 hours and spending most of your day with a client. Most of my clients, I spent two hours with them every two months. You know what I mean? So like, I know this is a lot and my client, like she didn't, um, she also didn't mind the time frame as well. We started at like 8 a.m. and finished around like three or four, including dryer time. Um, and yeah, it was a pretty easy process. All I made sure is like that everything was sealed. Everything uh, did not come. I made sure that nothing came out in the sink. You know, like when the water hit it, people be telling you not to wash your extensions and you don't want to have slippage. I feel like it helps make my extensions more secure and it helps me check my work because at the bowl is going to be the truth teller. I want to make sure that my clients know that even if you don't see me for a month, even if you don't see me for two months, you can go ahead and wash your hair and be independent. You know what I mean? So it's not like a scary process and you don't have to hold. I don't have to hold your hand as much. You know what I mean? So they know if I wash the hair and ain't no locks come out, they good to go. So yeah, guys, I just put in my growth oil and after that, I just finished with some lot of body. Um, that's a game changer. Make sure you know what your clients are allergic to. She was perfectly fine, but some people might be allergic to help. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. This is the before. She came in with a lot of beautiful hair. And this is my little setup. And this is the after. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.